Welcome on to the next edition of Run. My name is Brad. We've got Lindsay Perry with us once again. And we're talking about shoes today, the difference between neutral and stability. Lindsay, welcome back. Nice to catch up. How's it, Brad? Lindsay, great question in, in our forums from Nicole. And she's been running in a stability shoe. Uh, and uh, yeah, I've popped the, the question up on the screen. She says, I started focusing on shorter distances after Comrades uh, for the last four years. Uh, and strength hangs no Comrades this year. And after an assessment with a physio and bio, uh, she says she's completely skew. Her alignment is all out. She says she's got lazy glutes, tight uh, flexes, anterior pelvic tilt to name just a few. I was told that my loss, uh, that I was told to toss my stability shoes and that we should all be running in neutral is this true uh, because of my pelvic rotation and all my other problems this causes my foot to pronate i'm working hard on my strength training and my foot arch but is transition to a neutral shoe possible particularly if you've been running uh, in a stability shoe for a long long time so i think we must um just clarify that not everybody should be running in a in a um, neutral shoe. So there are people that have got real biomechanical issues that no amount of strength training um, is going to combat or, or fix. So there there are cases, um, particularly with excessive pronation, where anti-pronation shoes will be indicated and they will be needed. And I. With, in the absence of an actual evaluation on my part, what I often do when I'm asking people to try and figure out if they are in the right pair of shoes is that if you are getting a lot of pain on the inside of your legs, so in, inside on the shins or inside on the knee or inside on the ankle, ankle that would tell us that there's a, a lot of stress going through the inside and that you are possibly a candidate for a pair of anti-pronation shoes. But of course, I'd never diagnose that for somebody unless I, I could actually see them. In my experience, though, really eight to ten, eight to nine out of the ten people that I see are or should be in neutral, and a large percentage of those are not because the human foot is designed to pronate. So we are designed to land slightly on the outside of our foot, to roll towards the middle, and then to push off using our big toe as a power bar. Okay, So most people probably should be in, in a neutral shoe. And if you have been in a, in a pronation shoe for a long time and you, and you haven't really needed it, you can often run like that for years without picking up an injury. Of course, those people who really don't need an anti-pronation shoe and they may start to develop pain on the outside of their legs, so ITBs or shin splints on the outside, and that's because the shoe is actually forcibly stopping your foot from being able to do its job, whereas when you excessively pronate, your foot will still do its job, but the shoe will prevent it from going over. Okay, so now that we, we've cleared that up, moving from an anti-pronation shoe to a, a pronation shoe, uh, to, to a, a neutral shoe, absolutely that is possible. Um, and if it's the shoe you should be in, then I would recommend that you do make the switch. However, our bodies are extremely adaptable. And your body over the years has adapted to running in that anti-pronation shoe. So essentially what we want to do while you are doing these strength exercises and correcting all these um, areas of weakness or, or instability, whatever word you want to use, you will then wean yourself onto the new pair of shoes. Now, this can be done in, in one of two ways. If you are in full training, you would then run a couple of Ks a week with the, the new shoes and the bulk of your training in the old shoes, and you'd slowly over a period of five to six weeks make the transition to where you're doing the majority of your runs in, in the neutral shoe. Um, and then at that point, around about six weeks into the future, you'd make a, a, the, the full change and you'd be in your neutral shoes. If you've come off a break, as is the, the case here, then when you start again, I would just start much lower training volume and over a period of four weeks, just slowly build up in the new pair of shoes and as I said, somewhere around the four-week mark, 
you should be fine to carry on and train as normal in those shoes. Yeah, Lindsay, I mean, it's just the body needs to get used to the slight change in, in the way the, or the biomechanic change, basically. I mean, I'm no expert, but and, and I think that's where a lot of runners make that mistake is that they try and build up too quickly. And this isn't just a, a running shoe issue. It's just across the board that we, we tend to overdo things and, and pick up overuse injuries. And, and when you are transitioning like this from a, a stability shoe to a neutral shoe, that's what you've got to be careful of is not, not picking up one of those injuries where, where your body's not used to a certain movement. Uh, you've got to ease, ease your body into it yeah and i think it's a good principle actually every time we do something really big race a marathon do an ultra run a a 21k really really hard i think anytime we do something big for us you should take a short little break afterwards allow your body to recover and just spend 10 to 14 days slowly building up again and then, you know, somebody who's really just starting out as a beginner for running, what I do find is that typically at the beginning, they struggle so much that they self-limit and that lasts to about three or four weeks. And then at that three or four week point, you just get enough fitness that you can start taking much bigger jumps and those bigger jumps are actually what lead to injury. And you just need to be a bit more patient and keep building up a little slower. Yeah, absolutely. Don't forget as well, if you'd like to win, uh, we are giving away three months access to the Coach Perry online training platform as well uh, as a Biogen hamper. All you need to do is use the hashtag uh, Biogen Journey. Let us know what you're training for and we could be making you a winner. Uh, Let us know what you need help with and we could be giving you access to that uh, training club right now. Uh, The hashtag once again is Biogen Journey. Use them on the socials and uh, if you want to find out if you're a winner, make sure you listen to our weekly audio podcast. It's called Run with Coach Perry. And you can find that wherever you listen to your podcast, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, Spotify, Stitcher, wherever. Uh, It's available everywhere. So that's Run With Coach Perry and use that hashtag Biogen Journey. Until next time, from myself, Brad, and the coach, it's cheers.